What did they use to reconstruct an ACL tear? So this is interesting because this is like uh, sports residency testing stuff that you're asking me. So it's pretty cool. Um, but <laughs> interestingly enough, um, they used to use Gore-Tex until they found out uh, that they were, they were sawing through people's, people's femurs. And uh, they were trying to find, you know, the companies were trying to get rich and trying to find a way to uh, fix these ACL problems. These, uh, the first ACL reconstruction was done in the 1890s. And so, at least the first papers that were, were published on it, and they've been, they've been working on it for a long time, but it really didn't become epidemic like it is until the last few de decades. It was never really a huge problem. They didn't always fix them. And so the uh, surgical uh, companies, the, the uh, companies that make ortho orthopedic products looked at trying to, to create the, uh, the magic bullet and put these Gore-Tex ACLs in people uh, back in the 80s, and it actually ended up that the, the Gore-Tex didn't do well in, inside of the knee and actually sawed through people's femurs and they had to recall all of them. So could you imagine if that was you that had to deal with that? And, that, and that's the medical system in general. It surprises me that we find so much trust in it uh, with the history of everything. You know, today it's really nice. Uh, you can really rely on these surgeries, but I can even remember when I was a kid, it was borderline terrifying to have to go get a surgery. You know, when I was 15 years old and my friend tore his ACL, he spent time in a cast after an ACL surgery. Today, you're in therapy two days after, and I'm only 32 years old right now, you know, today, actually. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's not a very long time for things to change that much and to get that much better. So the most common uh, types of patellar tendon grafts or, or, or types of ACL grafts are the patella tendon and the hamstring. And so from the patella tendon, they take a bone patella uh, tendon bone, which means that they take a piece of the patella, the bone of the patella out, and a piece of the bone of the tibia out, and remove a strip of the uh, the middle one third of the patella itself in terms of the tendon itself and they pull that out of there and then they drill holes in the bones and stick it back inside of the knee okay where in the case of I don't have a really nice model of the hamstring um, they go up inside and pull the tendon out and then they put the tendon in without the bony attachment um, first of all the ACL in and of itself is the strongest of all the uh, the ACL grafts that they use, and the hamstring tendons now they're they're doubling them and tripling them. I even saw a study that was looking at could you do it five times? It's, like, it's kind of ridiculous because the reality of it is is that the uh, a lot of it has to do with where they're able to place the tendon. That has to do with putting the bone inside of the bone and letting it heal there. Um, and the patellar tendon in of itself gets more force through it at the you know just before the patient ever you know, uh, hurt themselves. The patellar tendon just happens to be an area of high force. So which that, what I'm saying is that means that the patellar tendon has to accept a lot of force. That means it's going to be stronger in its tensile force. And you also have the difference between allograft and autograft. Autograft mean, meaning that it's from yourself. So getting a, a patellar tendon uh, from yourself is typically a lot better. Your body's going to accept your own tissue versus uh, kind of what happened to Carson Palmer a while back, uh, the Bengals quarterback, um, he had gotten an allograft donor from a lady from her Achilles tendon that was 40 or 50 years old. Now, if I'm a professional football player, I want to know where that tissue is coming from, and I hope it's from somebody that's young, and really, I want it to be my own. You know, and they're still trying to figure these things out, and I think, you know, Carson and probably a lot of other people with the allografts are doing a, doing a fine job with them. Uh, they tend to tear a lot more than the bone patellar bone uh, tendons uh, do. The problem with the bone patellar tendon grafts is um, that they, they cut through here and they cut that patella tendon so it takes time to heal afterwards. And really, patellar tendonitis is uh, usually the main problem after uh, a, an ACL reconstruction. And the funny part is, is that we have a hard enough time rehabbing a, a 
patellar, uh, patellofemoral, that's the junk term, a patellofemoral problem or a patellar tendonitis from the beginning. So you definitely don't want somebody to have it after you do a huge ACL reconstruction, rehab them for six months, and then because you never fix their mechanics, the bad mechanics that they had from the beginning that were going to cause them maybe to have patellar tendonitis at some time down the road, now they have this problem and when their coach wants them back or uh, they're supposed to get back onto the field, they can't because they have patellar tendonitis. And you're more susceptible to getting that when you have a bone patellar tendon bone graft because they removed that tissue out of there, as I just said, which you tend to not see. I rehabbed quite a few of the allografts. Uh, they're actually pretty pain-free after, uh, after their surgery. There's no tissue to be cut. You just take the tendon from some other dead body, which is kind of always a little bit weird. Uh, I, think that, I think it's like one in a hundred million chance that you can get HIV from it. Maybe I think I'm not going to take a one in a hundred million chance. That's just me. I'm going to, you can just give me my own tissue. That's the way I look at it. Uh, I, I wouldn't do anything to put myself in that situation, but some people are a little bit more risky and they want to have a little bit of less pain. Unfortunately, again, like I said, the, the, the grafts usually aren't as strong um, as getting your bone patellar tendon bone from yourself. And so, difficulty runs in and I've ran into these people. Luckily, you know, ACLs being kind of one of my specialties, I've rehabbed people that have had five ACL tears and finally they're coming to me after they did all their rehabs the wrong way before and now they're on their fifth ACL tear and I'm saying, hey, did anybody ever tell you this, tell you that, look at this, biomechanics, and they go, no, nobody ever told me that. You know, that's that's uh, the life story about it. But whenever you run out of patellar tendons, what are you going to do? And you have to start finding other tissues. Uh, hopefully they don't put Gore-Tex in you. you know, that's kind of old, old hat. And I, I think probably illegal at this point. But uh, they have to come up with some option. And that's where the allografts are really going to work well for that person.